Hi, today I'm doing a book tag and I don't do book tags very often but I was tagged in an original book tag created by Keris at Brising for Books and it looks really fun. It's called the... I've forgotten the name of it. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> it's called the Don't Judge a Book tag and it's all about like judging book by its cover and like tropes and genres and all sorts and there's some really good questions. There's a couple that I can't answer so I will get to that when I get to those questions. So let's get straight into it. Number one is a book whose story does not match the cover. For this I'm gonna have to go with the Morganville Vampire series by Rachel Kane. I've never really understood or liked those, those covers. Let me just get a couple to show you. So these covers have like random women on the front and I just, I'm not a fan. I, I, I don't like people on covers anyway. I'm definitely the kind of person who prefers like illustrations on covers. Um, but like they just have like women. I just dropped one <laughs> on the front of them. I just, I don't really get it. I don't really know why <sighs> these books I really, I think I enjoy, I think I wanna do I want to try and like reread these. Maybe I'll start reading one a month or something, but it just kind of bugs me that the covers are just so random and like they could be so great, but I just, I'm not a fan. Number two is a book you love but hate the cover. Now, this is one where I don't like a specific version of a cover. So the book I'm going to go for for this is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. Now, I have this Waterstones cover, which I love. It's so pretty. Like, I really like it. The version of the cover that I don't like is the general UK release cover. I don't have it. I have this one. So I'll put it on the screen here. But it's just... I don't get it. It's too busy. There's like a silhouette of like a man, I assume Zachary, running and then there's like a tag and the B on the top and like it just looks a bit, I don't know, it just looks a bit cheap. <laughs> I love this book so much, like it's turned into one of my favourite books. I adored it. But yeah, the general UK cover is just not very nice at all. Like I got this one and I'm so glad I did because this one's so much nicer. It doesn't have all the extra like clip art type stuff in the background and it genuinely does look a bit like clip art. I don't want to say anything too mean because this book is so great but that cover is just, it's, I don't know what they did but it's not very good. <laughs> so this is one where I can't think of anything. Number three is a book you hate but love the cover. I don't think I really hate many books. I mean there's books that I don't really like very much uh, but I can't really think of that many books that I genuinely hated and even more so any that I really love the cover but didn't like the book. Maybe I'll think of one. Uh, if I do I'll like, I don't know, put it in the comments or something but I've thought about this for ages and I, I just can't think of one. I think I'm gonna have to skip it because I genuinely can't think of any. Number four is a book you initially thought you would dislike but ended up loving. I feel like if you've watched videos on my channel before you might have already heard me talk about this but my answer for this is Six of Crows, Lee Bardugo. I had very low expectations going into this. I read it for my YA book club and I have, had never read Lee Bardugo before. I am not a fantasy person anyway and I went into it even in the first few chapters thinking I'm gonna DNF this because I just didn't get it. I was It launches you straight into the story and I even tweeted being like should I have read, read other books before this? Uh, but the more I read the more I got into it and then by the time I finished it it genuinely changed my life. Like I loved it so much and I just loved the characters and the story and I don't even know. I just love that book so much. I've got a whole video on it explaining why I loved it so much and uh, yeah if you want to know more about it then go and watch that video. I'll link it up there or in the description. Number five is a book you initially thought you would love but ended up hating. So like I said I don't tend to hate books very often but this book I didn't like very much at all. <laughs> close to hating, I don't know. Um, I went into this with such high expectations, it was raved about uh, a lot and I 
thought I would love it and the premise is so good and I thought I would really like it and I just didn't. That is The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman. The premise is so great. It's like book spies have to go in to like different dimensions that all have their own quirks. So you'll have like a vampire dimension or you'll have like a dark magic one or you'll have like one that's um, steampunk. You'll have all sorts of different dimensions and they have to basically go and steal valuable books to keep them in this library dimension. There's an entire dimension that's just like an entire library. I love books about books um, and about libraries and things like that. So I had such high expectations for this and I didn't like it at all. I didn't like the characters, how they were written. I didn't like how the story was written. I thought it was written very childish. Um, it almost, I don't know, I don't want to be too horrible, but I genuinely didn't like this book very much at all, which was very disappointing because I thought I would really like it and I ended up, I'd so many times I wanted to DNF it and I stuck through it, but it was a genuine chore to try and stick through it, which made me sad because I was really looking forward to it and I know some people who really loved it. So safe to say I won't be carrying on with the series. <laughs> Number six is a plot or reveal that you didn't see coming. So <laughs> this is a bit of a cheat answer because it's not one specific twist. Middle Game by Shauna Maguire. This entire book is one massive twist. Like, oh my God, I love this so much. I just mentioned it in my February wrap up. I just loved it so much. But yeah, this book is full of twists. Like I said in my wrap up, when you expect something to happen, it goes off in a completely different direction and ends up being nothing like what you expected. Uh, so yeah, for a book that is a twist that I didn't see coming. This entire book is just twist after twist after twist that I did not see coming and I just loved it so much. <laughs> Number seven is an author you had low expectations for but you loved their book. Again, this is what I'm struggling with because I can't think of any authors that I would have low expectations for. Like, the only one I could think of was, again, Leigh Bardugo because she writes fantasy and I don't read a lot of fantasy, but I really love Six of Crows. But I didn't really have low expectations for Leigh Bardugo because I know that she is widely, like, acclaimed as being an incredible author, so... I didn't really have low expectations for her. I just didn't really know what I was gonna expect. So for this one, again, I'm struggling to come up with an answer. Again, if I come up with one, like after this video, then I'll um, put it somewhere. But yeah, I don't tend to, with authors I haven't read before, I don't tend to set expectations for the, like, the author's books themselves. So yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> Number eight is a trope that you thought you hated, but this book proved you wrong. <laughs> I have two questions in a row that I'm struggling to answer here. See, tropes aren't a big thing that I think of a lot. Like, a lot of people focus so much on tropes and they're like, I don't like this trope, I love this trope. Tropes aren't something that I really consider in my head when I'm thinking of a book to read. Like, I don't even know really many tropes that I like or dislike. I just like books or I don't like books. I don't, it's not specific things that are commonly in books that I don't tend to like. I guess one trope that I really don't like is instant romance, uh, like insta love, because I just don't relate to it in any way at all. But I don't think I've ever read a book that has proven me wrong on that. Like I've never read a book that has insta love in it that I liked. I don't know. Uh, like two reasons I can't really answer this question is I don't think about tropes very much. I don't really know what I like and don't like. And also I haven't read a book that I've thought, oh wait, I thought I didn't like this, but I do now. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, Karis, I'm not answering a lot of your questions very well. <laughs> Number nine is a book you loved from a genre you don't typically enjoy. So for this one, I'm gonna go with Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. I loved this book a lot. Um, it was, I think, it was one of my favourite books of last year. I really liked it. But it's in the horror genre, and horror is something that I have never liked. I hate horror films. I, I think I've got too much of an active imagination, and I can't watch anything horror without thinking about it for weeks. Uh, and same for books. Like, I just freak myself out reading horror. I'm such a wimp. But this is kind of like, almost like fantasy horror, and 
those are two things that I just don't read. I don't think I've ever really read much horror at all. But this was really cheap at Yalk. I love this cover so much. This hardback is just so beautiful. Like it feels matte and it's just so pretty. Like inside the book is just beautiful. Um, so I got it for really cheap. It was like a fiver at Yalk. So I just decided to get it while it was cheap. I read it late last year and I just loved it. Like the story was so good. I think it's just got such strong characters and the story is just so good that the horror elements worked really well in it. And like, I just love the characters and like sexuality, uh, like LGBT rep plays such a big part in this. And it just had so many other elements that it wasn't just focused on trying to be scary. And I think that's what I don't like about horror is when it's just trying to be scary for the sake of it, just to scare people. This was kind of at some parts, I was reading it at night and just being like, I feel really unsettled by this, but, it had so many other elements that made me really love it. And then number 10 is a book from your TBR that you think might surprise you. I had to think about this for a little while. Um, I was trying to look at my TBR and thinking, is there anything here that I don't kind of already have expectations for? I realized one book that I'm reading for book club this month is How to Lose the, no, what's it called? This is how, I will always forget the name of this book. This is How You Lose the Time War. I think that's what it's called. I'll put it up here. I bought the um, ebook, so I don't have a physical copy, but this is gonna go either way for me. I'm either gonna really hate it or I'm gonna really love it. I feel like it's gonna be one way or the other. Some people have really hated it, but I've seen other people say that it's incredible. I just get the feeling that I'm gonna, it's gonna surprise me how much I'm gonna like it. And I might be wrong, I might hate it, but I am just getting a feeling from this book that I'm just gonna really, really like it. It's quite a short book. It's like 200 pages, I think. So hopefully it won't take me very long to read. But yeah, I'm just, I don't know why. I'm just getting the idea that I'm gonna really love it. Maybe I'll be proven wrong. Maybe I'll hate it, but I'll see. Uh, but yeah, that's my answer for that. So that's it. That's all the questions. I am sorry, Karis, that I couldn't answer like however many three of your questions or something. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'll put a link to Karis's original video in the description. So please go and watch that. And I am going to tag a couple of people in the description. But if not, then I just tag you. If you're watching this and you want to do this tag, then please do. I will see you soon with another video. Bye.